Most people allow their fear of failure, 80% allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. When you're willing to fail again and again and again, when you make up your mind to become unstoppable, when you make up your mind to become a no matter what person, then that will then give birth to a part of yourself that you don't know right now. And the question is, if you die today, what dreams, what ideas, what talents, what books, what music, what leadership, what voice will die with you? Will it be easy? No. Will it be challenging? Yes. So you got to prepare yourself. You've got to develop yourself. As long as you're breathing, you got some more work to do. There's something else for you to achieve. Guess what? You're going to make some mistakes. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. What I've come to appreciate when you're working on changing your life, changing some bad habit, getting out of addictive situations or relationships, or working to build a dream or making a difference in our society, it's hard. See, a lot of people, because of failure, they stop, they stop believing. Let me share something with you. You will fail your way to success. Yes. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. You will fail your way to success. It doesn't matter how many times you fail. It doesn't matter how many times people tell you that you can't do it. It doesn't matter if you don't have a dime in the bank. You will fail your way to success. These challenges that you face, they're gonna do their best take you down. Do not let them. Stand up. Dig in. Line up those problems and confront them. Face them. Fight them. Do not let them bring you down. In fact, let those challenges raise you up. Let them elevate you. Let their demands and their trials make you stronger. Let the adversity you face today turn you into a better person tomorrow. It's not over until I win. Not over till I get through. It's not over till I get over. Not over till I get what I want. Door can't open today, look out. I'm gonna come back and take the hinges off. That's how you got to do that. You've got to have that kind of courage, that type of determination. If you want to make it happen, it's you. That you've got to take personal responsibility to make it happen. You may lose a family member, you probably will. Somebody may get cancer. Your business may, the government might change the rules. They might change things radically that you can't even do anything about it. You might go bankrupt, you might get divorced. I don't say anybody will, but no one knows what's gonna really happen in your life. Life's full of uncertainty, but here's what you can know. You can decide that what happens, you can have a great time. If somebody like Viktor Frankl can be locked up in Auschwitz and come out of that and experience finding joy in the middle of Auschwitz, then human beings have a capacity they've undersold themselves on. We think that the outside world determines how we feel. If, if people have to behave a certain way, if your husband or your wife or your kids or your coworkers or whoever, your boss has to behave a certain way for you to be happy, and if they don't, you're unhappy, then you're always gonna be unhappy because the more people around you, the more they're gonna change that because they're all human, right? And if you have to be a certain way to be happy, you're gonna violate it too. So my invitation is, as great as it is to achieve, more important to enjoy. And if you can enjoy every moment in that state, when you're feeling loving and playful and passionate and curious and awe, you treat other people a hundred times better than when you're feeling frustrated, pissed off, overwhelmed, worried, stressed, or feeling sorry for yourself. You're gonna be a better parent, you're gonna be a better lover, you're gonna be a better business person, you're gonna have a better life. So my soliloquy is, decide. I, I realize that when to, to have the level of success that I, I want to have. It's difficult to spread it out and do multiple things. It takes such a desperate, obsessive focus. You really got to focus with all of your fiber and all of your heart and all of your creativity. There's no easy way around it. No matter how talented you are, your talent is going to fail you if you're not skilled. 
you know, if you don't study, if you don't work uh, really hard and dedicate yourself to being better every single day, you'll never be able to communicate with, with people, with your artistry the, the way that you want. You're going to have to move ahead in spite of your fear, all right? I've said many times that every major decision in Saddleback's 42-year history that I had to make, I was scared to death to do it. I just did it anyway because I was not going to let fear dominate me. We're going to do the right thing. Never let fear stop you. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is moving ahead in spite of your fear. If you're not afraid, you don't need courage. You only have courage when you're scared to death and you do it anyway. Where does self-confidence come from? And this is the best advice I can give you on that. Not neglecting, first of all, the small daily discipline. Self-confidence really comes from feeling good about yourself. And one of the best ways to feel good about yourself is at the end of the day to know that you poured it on. You did your best. If you conducted a meeting, you did the best you could. If you made a phone call, it was the best phone call you could possibly make. If you wrote a letter, it wasn't a casual letter, it was your best letter. At the end of those kind of days, when you feel good about yourself, self-confidence starts to rise. I'm asking you to stand at the door. I'm asking you, whatever threatens you, threaten it back. Whatever pushes against you, push it back. Whatever wants to overwhelm you like a father, stand up, take control, and do battle with your enemies wherever you find them. Now here's one more. We must also deal with the enemies within ourselves. Some of the enemies are a lot closer than that. They are within. And I want to give you a list of some of the things to watch out for when you get back home called enemies within your self. Here's the first one, indifference. Whatever you do, practice not being casual. You've got to shake off sometimes the lethargy that would say, oh, well, maybe it's not going to work for me. Don't be casual. Casualness creates casualties. You've got to deal with it. Indecision is called the thief of opportunity. Make decisions even if it's a wrong decision. Do the very best you can, make a decision and go with it. If it doesn't work out because it was a wrong decision, I'm telling you, that gives you experience now to make a better decision. Here's the next one, doubt. We've all got to deal with the enemy of doubt. Cynicism has a unique way of crowding in on all of us being cynical about society, being cynical about the past, cynical about the future. I'm asking you, don't let that disease grab you by the throat and ruin your chances to do well. Yes, it's easy to doubt that it can happen. It's easy to doubt. We've all got fears that want to crowd in. And here's one of the worst ones of all, and that is to doubt yourself. Don't doubt your own ability. You can possibly find. So whatever your enemies are here, drive them into a small corner. Here's the next one. Over caution. Hey, in the spring, if you're too cautious, you never will plant the seed. If you're too cautious, you won't take the chance. If you're too cautious, you won't step out front. Make this Thank note. You You've got to take Check a out chance. Our other motivational videos drive your that will help you turn tendency to be too cautious. Drive direction. it into a small corner. Yes, you can't be gullible. No, you can't go for everything. Yes, you've got to be careful. Yes, but don't be so cautious that it paralyzes you. Don't be so cautious that it restricts your chance to do better. See if you can't conquer that. Here's the next one, pessimism. Yes, there's the dark side. Yes, there's the problem side. Yes, there's the difficult side. But I'm telling you, it's not the only side. Yes, the glass is half empty, but it's also half full. Yes, there's the dark side, but there's the light side. Yes, the night comes, but so does the day. I'm telling you, don't be afraid of both sides, opportunity and difficulty, chance and danger. Learn how to handle it all. Now here's the last one. You've got to deal with it. I have to deal with it. We all have to deal with it. And that's complaining. Yes, there's room for a legitimate complaint. But here's what I'm asking you. Don't let complaining master your life. If you become a chronic complainer, I'm telling you, nobody wants to be around you, chronic complainer. I wouldn't want you for a business partner. 
Don't let complaining conquer your life. What I would call leadership leanings, they would have a, a, a tendency to lean or be gifted in that area, just like somebody's gifted in music or, or whatever. So I think that that, that that starts it, and I think I have that. But then I, I grew up in a leader's home. In fact, my father is 98, still living. Whoa. And in fact, until two years ago, was still working full time and, and was a terrific leader. So I grew up in a culture and environment of leadership. And so when I look at myself at where I am today, uh, so much of it uh, was caught from, from not only my father, but I've had great mentors throughout my life. In fact, while we're out here in Los Angeles, you know, every time I come out here, I think of John Wooden, who mentored me for the last probably 11 years of his life. Whoa. And um, in fact, when, you're, when you talked about the sometimes you win, sometimes you learn, uh, he, he did the forward on that book. Mm. And, and he just loved the idea of, of, of how to get back up after, after you fail. So when you look at my home background, uh, the leadership experiences that I had, you, because a person learns to lead by practicing leadership. Mm. And at, at a very early age, I was practicing leadership. And so it all comes together. And then when I began to realize everything rises and falls on leadership, I became really intentional, Tom, of developing my leadership skills. So I can remember, for example, I was probably, I don't know, maybe 26, I heard Earl Nightingale say on a tape, that uh, if you had spent one hour a day, every day, on one subject for five years, you could become an expert on that subject. So I said, wow, I, I want to become an expert in leadership. So for the next five years, you know, I spent an hour every day reading about leadership, talking to leaders, asking leaders questions, practicing leadership, but it uh, really was consistent. And when I started that process, I, I was thinking five years, Earl Michael said I could become an expert in five years. Okay, wow, ex leadership expert, hello. And, and, and so I kept, you know, I was kind of like doing countdown, five years, four years, three years. I'm thinking I'm Cape Canaveral, okay. But something happened to me about halfway through that five-year process. Instead of keeping asking myself, how long will it take? How long will it take? How long will it take? One day I began to realize how I was growing as a leader and the change that was happening within me. And I stopped asking the question, how long will it take? And I started asking the question, how far can I go? And everything changed that day. I realized that you can set goals and have five-year goals, whatever, but but I, I, I changed from a goal mindset to a growth mindset. And the fact that if I would be intentional in the areas of growth that would have the return and, and would fit who I was, that I could really be successful and help a lot of people. And, and that was a, a kind of a shift for me. And so when I wrote my first leadership book, I thought I would write one leadership book and I'd be done. I, I, you know, I didn't think a hundred books later. I, I had a lady the other day who said, you've written more books than I've ever read in my life. You know what I mean? But I didn't have any intention to write a lot of books. I, but, but growth allows you to continue to expand yourself and your world until there's just you know, so much more that you know and so much more that you want to share. So, you know, my journey has been really one of, of understanding that, that if I every day intentionally grow, the question is just, how, you know, how far can I go? And I, I don't know that answer. I'm still, I'm still growing. I'm still, I'm still moving towards that finish line.